Hi and welcome back to TubeFix. On this particular video we're going to take that mold that I made in the last video and actually pour it out to acrylic. I know you're saying to yourself where the heck have you been? A lot has happened since we last talked and we last worked with the mold and so you're going to see a video today that actually is a series of videos that I created before I got sick and before the COVID-19 crisis and then kind of during and after, well, not really after yet, we're in the middle of it right now. In fact, my entire family's on quarantine right now and I'm working from home most days. So I hope you and yours are staying happy and healthy, um, but that's where we're at right now. And so uh, I had started to create uh, the first part of the, the molding adventure and molding the valve um, and then got uh, promptly sick for three, four, five weeks in there. And so it's been a long, long journey to try to get back to this. Um, I have been working on the project little bits by little bits and recording some stuff, but as you know, uh, editing and, and getting everything put together takes some time. So I apologize for that, but I'm glad you came back. I'm glad to be back and I'm uh, really excited to show you what today's project looks like in terms of the valve development in acrylic. Now that we have this handy dandy mold, we have to do something with it after this. So I took a X-Acto knife, well, utility knife, and kind of trimmed out the edges of the mold here. It was a little, a little frayed with a little bit of silicone here, and there's some floppy edges here. It just didn't look nice and neat. I wanted it to look nice and neat. Same thing on the bottom. Kind of trimmed away that so we'd have a, a nice neat bottom, if not a little bit flared. If it's a little bit flared, I figure that's better than being a little bit the opposite way. Because what you don't want is you don't want it to be... You want it to be t too large and have to trim it down or sand it down um, rather than the other way around. And so um, I think I'm now clear. You can see all the way through. See the valve parts? Pretty cool. So, okay. I think we're ready now to actually pour out and mix our epoxy. Boy, that is a workout. All right, we'll keep that as a souvenir for later. All right, now that we have this beautiful cup of questionable looking liquid, we're ready to actually pour it into the mold and see how she goes. The one curiosity and, and potential problem that I have with this is that there's quite a few lot of air bubbles in here. And usually on flat surfaces, when you epoxy them, you can wave a torch over them and the torch heat will bring the bubbles out. In this particular case, I'm going to try that with the top, but I honestly don't know if it's going to do any good for any of the bubbles farther down in. They may work themselves out before it sets or they may not, and I may have a bubble filled valve. We're just going to have to kind of see how that goes. I'm also hoping that it's viscous enough to drop itself in and around all the valve parts because there's a lot of intersections down in there. I'm really hoping that it works out. I'm going to pour slowly enough with the idea that it gives it time to do so without developing air pockets. But uh, your guess is as good as mine as to whether or not this is good. But hey. We're uh, used to doing crazy things here, so why not start now? All right, well, having left this sit for a number of days, longer than I needed to, it's a little stuck. Take the little chip off the old bottom. I figured out that um, it leaked and so the top of the valve um, molding is actually lower than, than the mold itself so that may um, invalidate this particular cast and I may have to redo it because that may not be um, tall enough but you know live and learn. Um, the stuff is actually rather subtle and leaked at the bottom more than I thought it would so oops oops on me for not realizing that it would do that. But let's unwrap it and see what we got here. All right, here we go. A 
And that is our acrylic molded valve. Not bad in comparison, huh? But that's pretty neat. I like it. Magic! In and amongst all that, I decided to take upon this valve and actually try to work on it to get to a more workable state. And I apologize, I didn't take any video of it, but that's okay. You don't really need to see video after video after video of me drilling holes and sanding and all the other sort of stuff. You know how that goes, right? So you want to see the finished product. You want to see things work. So here we are. This is where we're at today. So this was the valve that I showed in the previous uh, series of videos that I had just molded. Um, I did a couple things. So in the bottom, if you remember on the original valve, there is a uh, indentation. And that indentation uh, serves primarily to house a spring um, in here so it doesn't slip out. And then we also have some venting. Now I don't have the venting on this one yet, but I did go and drill out a bit of an indentation. Um, I was a little leery of trying to get too close to the edges, um, so I didn't. Uh, but I think it's enough to hold the spring intact, so I'm happy with that. Um, the other big real move that I did here, well, two other big moves. Um, I did end up pouring up acrylic to level out the top, uh, but then I had to promptly sand it down because it was a little uneven, so I did do that. Um, I also took an X-Acto knife, a uh, utility knife, and trimmed off all the little excess edges and things like that along the, along the sides that were sticking out and going to cause bumps. One of my mistakes along the way was I trimmed off the valve key, um, the valve guide. So that's going to be a problem. Um, but I believe I'm going to cast this again because I've learned things along the way and this will definitely be Rev 1. So in, in light of that, um, I also went and found an appropriately sized drill bit and drilled it out. Now, as luck would have it, it is way easier to drill into acrylic than you would ever imagine. And it actually went really, really well because, of course, these were all already indented by the mold. And so to drill out the remainder of it was actually way easier than I thought it would be. I was able to do it at low speed on the drill with a rather large bit, um, kind of shuffle it around in there, and I cleaned it up a little bit using a Dremel tool. So I have three very nice holes going through here and a very nice level flat top. Now, you'll notice one thing missing from this valve versus any other valve. Oh, there's no valve stem on this thing. Uh, we're going to need that in order to be able to push things down and, and manipulate and what have you. I don't have any extra valve stems. This tube didn't come with it. So what am I going to do about that? Well, I think the primary thing I'm going to do is I found um, this particular black screw. Um, I'm going to uh, try to embed that within here at about the right height, uh, which is a little bit deep. So we'll see if that's a good idea or not. Um, I might try to find a slightly smaller screw, but I really don't have an alternative. I will try to source a valve stem that will work before I make the final copy. I just didn't have time right now. And as you know, shipping uh, during COVID-19 is practically impossible. Amazon Prime no longer means two days, it means two weeks. Um, and so I wasn't about to go order a valve stem right now because it was just kind of an impossible task, to be honest. So let me see if I can find a different screw that might be slightly shorter. And we'll go at trying to get this embedded properly uh, to be our uh, makeshift valve stem. So slightly shorter screw should work really, really nice. Um, I roughly know the center of this and I have a drill bit loaded. So I'm going to give it a shot and drilling this in. I'm just going to core it out just ever so slightly. Nicely enough, acrylic ends up being a lot softer to work with in this particular regard for, for drilling and shaping than I would have imagined, which is really satisfying. All right. Phillips screwdriver obtained. I'm just going to drive that in there. Now, I do have kind of a height I'm going for here, so... I'm going to try to maintain that if I can. And somewhat, some semblance of straightness. Ha 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 ha. You're funny, I know. Ooh, that's not straight at all, certainly. The height's pretty close, though. 
Yep, I think that'll do it. That, that will do it right there. Okay, good deal. So now we have the valve. We have a makeshift valve stem. Isn't it lovely? Um, so now I guess really the challenge is to try it in the tuba and see how it goes. But here's our new valve. So intact with our screw. And yeah, okay, so I cheated. I knew that was going to fit because I've been feeding it back and forth as I've been sanding it, so I knew it was going to go in just fine. If I go and retrieve a spring ever so quickly, pop it in there, and push it down into that. Ha-ha! Look at that. Look at that. We have some, we have movement, kids, and that is what we want. Here's the other part. I can't test it right now. Why not? Uh, because I've removed the lead pipe. So the lead pipe actually comes out here, so I can't actually even play into it. So we now have a working valve, at least as far as we know, in acrylic. And it looks really good, and it works uh, pretty well in the valve casing as well. Obviously can't test it yet because we have some metal work to do. I had removed the lead pipe off of that, and I have some video of that that I'm going to edit in at some point here. I just haven't gotten that far. But that'll be our next concentration because the very next thing I'd like to do is actually test this valve and make sure it works. Can't do that until I can play it. So we have to fix that crinkled up lead pipe that was uh, leaky and full of holes. That will help our tone production an awful lot as well. So until then, uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and, and hit the like button so that we get recognition. And come along for the next version and the next journey along this tuba fix uh, adventure. And I'll see you then.